This is the second part of our steering demo. In this particular one, we're going to have a look at how the steering behaviors were implemented uh, to see how uh, we can seek towards a particular target object whilst trying to avoid uh, other ones. Uh, so just by way of, of, of reminding you for the particular demo, whenever we run this here, we had our player control spaceship, which was controlled by the player. We had a, a bunch of asteroids, um, we had some green seeker ships, uh, and then also a number of, of turrets that were always trying to look towards the player um, as, as the player moved around the level, whereas the green seeker ships trying to seek towards the player whilst trying to avoid hitting the player or themselves, the asteroids, all of the other ships. Uh, so no collision detection in this, it simply was the steering behaviour was used to, to try to determine how they move around. And you can see for the green ones, they're trying to balance these different competing needs. Uh, so we'll have a look at how we can implement this um, uh, within this particular uh, video. We'll actually start off first of all with the player spaceship. So in terms of the behavior of the player spaceship, I want something that as I click, um, and I click relative to the center of the screen, it determines uh, how I move. And if I'm in closer to the center of the screen, then I'm going to move sort of a slow direction as I move out towards the end, I move a faster direction. Uh, so we want to have a look at our player to see how we can bring that form of behavior about. So the player spaceship is a type of sprite, so we're building upon that base class. We have a few um, things in here for the, the screen center and the, the player touch acceleration. Um, so the, these are ones that we will be using frequently. So they're declared to be private in here because we don't want to be continually creating them every single uh, time we update or draw the ship. They're both vector two, so this was one of our, our sort of um, classes we put in the holds an X and a Y component. So it is an object, um, and because it's an object, we don't want to be creating them needlessly and necessarily every single time we call update, every single time we call draw. So we're basically caching them um, by way of reuse. How does this work? So when we create the player spaceship, we're giving it a location, we're telling its parent screen, uh, we're passing these things in then to the super constructor, and we're going, and uh, by way of the, the image, the default image that it uses, we're going to the game screen, we're getting the game fragment, we're getting the asset manager that's part of the game fragment, and we're asking it to get the bitmap called spaceship one, because that's what we've assumed this one is, is available by name. Um, store the, the center of the screen. So we, we do this here because when we have a touch event, it is its location relative to the center of the screen that's going to determine the, the direction and the overall magnitude. And we set up some properties. Uh, this is based on the sprite class. You may want to have a look at that just by way of doing it. But we're saying that uh, for this particular sprite, max acceleration of 300 units, max velocity of 100 units and then the angular velocity and acceleration of those particular values. So this determines how quickly it moves, how quickly it rotates. Um, for the update method within this one here, what we're doing there is because this is the player's controlled chip, we need to get input from the player. We check to see do we have any. And if we do have any, so it's not multi-touch, we're assuming just the first touch point on the screen, we get uh, that particular touch location and we're then working out relative to the screen's center. So we'll, we'll know the center of the screen. So this is the location relative to the center of the screen. Having converted that into a location relative to the center of the screen, that then gives us a chance to multiply it, or we can then use our max acceleration to multiply it. So if it is in the far left-hand side, it'll be a value of minus one. It'll be maximum, if you like, negative x acceleration. If it's the far right-hand side, It'll be positive one, so it'll be full positive acceleration. And likewise with the top and bottom of the screen. Then we have a little bit of um, steering behavior being put into the player uh, controlled one. So when we when we add an acceleration, it changes the position. But as the, the player was moving around, the spaceship itself also rotates in the direction of travel. So as I change and I click on the screen, we have the ship rotate around until it's pointing straight in that particular direction of travel. And that, that particular bit was handled by our, our steering behaviors or aligned with uh, motion. So if I were, for example, to comment that out, and then just to rerun this here, 
we would have a, a spaceship that'll still move, that'll still have the same overall acceleration relative to, to where it has been clicked, um, but is not now going to, to change its orientation. So there, I'm still moving around the screen in the same way I was before, but my default orientation just remains at, 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 as the normal way the image was shown. We're not actually moving ourselves. So by putting that in, it helps um, make sure then that we, we look in the direction, we align with the movement, the velocity of that particular object. After that, we have a little bit of dampening put in, and that's important. Um, let me just rerun it then so we can, we can put the angular bit in. So the reason we put dampening in is that as soon as I release my touch from the screen, I want to have it um, basically not stop immediately, but to slow down reasonably rapidly. So as I can accelerate full in one direction, I let go now, and it slows down. I can accelerate full and let go now, and then it slows down. So this is to give the notion of it sort of coming to a rest, to sort of simulate some notion of dragging the environment. Um, simple way to do that is that every single frame, we basically remove an element of it. Um, so I'm, I'm always multiplying my acceleration by 0.75. So it, it, it reduces to zero quite quickly. And I multiply my velocity by 0.95. So it tends to zero more slowly. But it will actually approach zero or, or get to a point where effectively it's, it's negligible. Uh, overall velocity be visible on the screen. Um, so having done this, getting our input, uh, looking in the direction of travel, uh, and then putting in some dampening effects, we... Um, that, that, that's all the changes we need to do. We call them the sprites update method, which will then take these things into account and give it a new position based on its acceleration, based on its velocity. There's no other methods in this. So in terms of drawing, we're using the default draw method that the sprite provides. That is, is good to go for this particular uh, instance. For the AI spaceship, uh, so this particular one here, again, it's a type of sprite. We're defining a numerator type to say that we have two types of behavior that AI spaceships can have. They may be a turret, which is the one that seeks, or looks towards the player, or a seeker, which is the one that tries to head towards the player. We're setting up a few parameters within this here so that um, we set a threshold um, for separating from the ship and a threshold uh, for separating from the asteroid. So th these, these are ones that come in that Will, will determine when it tries to avoid something. So in this sense, it's trying to avoid an asteroid at a wider, longer distance than it is trying to avoid the ship. It'll fly closer into the ship than it will an asteroid. Um, again, we, we've got a few accumulators or, or, or vector two objects that we're creating here that we're going to create or use every single frame. So we, we create them once so we can reuse them every single frame as opposed to creating a new instance of them. And we'll see how these accumulators are used. For constructing the spaceship, so we, we define, we pass into this the type of behavior. Is it a seeker? Is it a turret? And we record that. And then based on the, the type of element that it is, we, we're, we're defining its properties. So we're saying, for example, for a turret, its max acceleration and velocity is zero. It doesn't move. But it has an angular velocity, angular acceleration, so it can rotate. Um, we, we load in the bitmap for that. Uh, for the case of the, the Seeker one, we're saying that it has an acceleration, has a velocity, has an angular velocity, angular acceleration. So if I were, for example, to set this to be 300, uh, and then we'll rerun that, we've, we've given it much more acceleration, so it'll be more zippy in terms of how quickly it responds or reacts to events, but ultimately not faster in terms of its maximum speed um, by which it, it moves. So running this now, we find some spaceships wherever they've randomly located. We'll have this one here, and if you compare to the previous one, it's able to, to move out of the way and to avoid each other with, with more haste, if you like. The other ones are a little bit more leisurely in terms of how they did it. Hasn't changed its maximum velocity, hasn't changed its maximum rotational speed, but now it just responds a bit more promptly in terms of having a, a higher acceleration. So we can put that back to 300, a little bit more reasonable there. For the update method, within this here, we've got a switch. So depending on what type of behavior we're trying to bring about, we'll, 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 we'll trigger that. If it is a turret, 
then the behavior there is we're going to go to our, our steering behaviors class and this is something that's engaged within AI steering behaviors we'll have a look at this in a second so steering behaviors is, is a package that encapsulates all of our different behaviors we've got a look at behavior within this so we say who's doing the looking at uh, and where are you looking at so in this case it is the position of the spaceship now to get that effectively we've had to go up to our game screen so the game screen uh, so this 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 um, turret is part of, of our game screen so we go to the game screen we want to get access to the player and if you remember back to the last video the first video on this one we had to find some methods within our game screen that would enable us to get the player out so we're saying it's not just any game screen it's a steering demo game screen and a steering demo game screen has a get player spaceship method so the turret can call this method that will give me the player and I can then go to the player, which is type sprite, and say, well, give me your position. And that's what I will be looking at. So that's how we link these two things together. For the seeker behavior, this is a little bit more involved. Um, so there's a number of things we want to do there. The first one is we want to seek towards the player. And that's very similar to look at. So we're calling our seek method. Who's doing the seeking? Where are we seeking to? The position of the player. And that gives us our output acceleration uh, from this particular one. So we'll have that then defined as, as how we want to accelerate. That's, that's the output that we get from that one. Um, previous one, we, we got an angular acceleration as our output. But because the acceleration here is an x and a y component, we pass in a vector 2. And that vector 2 gets to be updated. Now, that's, that's, that's the key behavior. It seeks towards the player, but then it tries to avoid hitting things. And we've got three groups of things we're going to try to avoid we're going to try to avoid the player spaceship itself so there we're going to use our separate behavior um, we're passing in well who's trying to avoid what are we trying to avoid the player spaceship we're passing in some information about well how close can we get to it before we take corrective action and how strongly we're going to try to avoid it and that will if, if it if it if we do have an avoid response, it'll give us um, a, an acceleration away from it. So this acceleration component is basically any individual avoidance tendency. So if we're trying to avoid a specific asteroid or a specific player or whatever, that's what we'll store within that accumulated component. So that's, that's potentially zero if we're far away or it potentially has a value if we're close to it. Now, we have an accumulator because there's a bunch of objects that we might want to avoid. So we want to look at all of them and to add up all of the different avoidance responses that we have to get one final answer at the end. So there we are, are initially, because this is the first one, we are setting um, our accumulator uh, to be any particular component we got out of this. We then look at the other spaceships, so the other AI-controlled spaceships. So we're separating, it's this object, and we're getting in an array, a list of AI-controlled spaceships. Uh, passing that in and again if that has any triggerable element if, if we want to avoid them that'll be stored in the uh, accelerated component and we now add that in to your accumulator we add it on so potentially we've got a combination of two movements here one to avoid the player and one to avoid other spaceships we're still not done so we want to avoid the asteroids as well so same sort of thing this object's avoiding all of the asteroids um, if we do have a response, it'll be stored within this, and we add it on to, to that one. So this builds up, if you like, our net overall response within one vector. We've got a check down here. Now, if the accumulator is not zero, so if it is not zero, it means that actually we were close to some object and we wanted to avoid it. If it is zero, it means we considered the player and the asteroids and the other spaceships. Um, in nobody's case, were we were within the trigger distance. We were sufficiently far away. We didn't take any action. Um, but this is what happens if it is um, a, a collision is coming up. In this particular sense, then, um, we are looking at the acceleration. So this is how we move. And this is the original value we calculated as part of the seek. So the seek determined acceleration heading towards the player. If we have an avoidance situation, then we're not saying, and we could say this if we wanted to, we, we could potentially say if a collision is coming up, that is the most important thing. We will automatically try to avoid the collision. Here we're, we're 
hedging our bets a bit. We're saying that, right, I'm going to retain 30% of my acceleration towards the player. So I'm still going to try to go towards the player, but I'm going to then retain 70% of my collision avoidance um, activity. So it's a mixture. And this is how steering algorithms are set up. And this is sometimes the reason why it's difficult to balance them, that you can have competing needs. And it's up to us then to decide how do we balance those competing needs. In this case, I'm saying, okay, you, you mostly try to avoid the collision, but you still try to head towards the player somewhat. Um, that means you will get collisions from time to time, but fair enough, I've decided that that's not really an issue for me in this, uh, this demo. Final bit at the end, similar to what we did with the player, this is the, the other behaviors produce a, um, a linear a sort of a movement, uh, but we want to get the spaceship to look in the direction of travel. So we, we set an angular acceleration so it rotates around, so it's pointing in the direction of travel itself. That's all of our AI then triggered. Uh, we then call the sprites update, which will take those accelerations to give us velocities, to give us updated positions and orientations. Um, so reasonably straightforward. The final class we want to look at is our steering behaviors. I'll go through this quite quickly because really all this is is, is a collection of um, the different types of algorithm that we looked at within the, the, the lecture. So within this here, it's, um, it's a class. We've got, for example, a, a seek method that we can call where we pass in the seeking sprite, target position, and we get our acceleration coming out. And it implements more or less the same code that we looked at um, within the, the lecture. We have a corresponding flee behavior. And actually it should be fleeing sprite uh, over here. So we can put that in, just remove that error. Um, here we have our behavior for arrive, if we want to go to a point and stop whenever we get at that point. Um, next one we have down is an align, if we want to, to align with a particular direction. And then we're calling our look at and our align with movement, so both of those different actions. Separate was the one at the bottom, and there's two variants of this, one that takes in a single object or takes in a list of objects. And again, that will call the, the default separate behavior, again, as we looked at in the lecture. So the type of stuff we have here is, is no different than the basic lecture content. So you can refer yourself to that in terms of how the algorithm worked, and then have a look at how it is implemented within this particular class. But hopefully, overall, you can see that given that basic behavior, you can combine them together in reasonably sophisticated ways. It gets out quite interesting forms of, of movement for our AI-controlled sprites.